Good morning. morning. This is Passion Sunday, the first day of Holy Week, and we enter into these days of Jesus marching into Jerusalem. Thank you for sharing in this time of worship. Please take note of the announcements in the bulletin. There's a couple sign-up sheets on the board, sign-up sheets for help with the Easter egg hunt and also Easter breakfast for next Sunday. Um, Need for some muffins and the like, and also some candy and treats that we'll be putting in the Easter eggs here at church. Um, Please take note of the schedule for next, this coming week, Monday, Thursday, 6.30, Good Friday, 6.30, no Saturday worship, 7.30 and 9.30 worship on Easter Sunday with other activities in between. Please keep in your thoughts and prayers all those who are on our prayer list, but especially Faye Schmiesing, who is hospitalized in St. Cloud, and also Kurt Funkhauser, who's also hospitalized in St. Cloud with a variety of issues. So I invite you to stand and join in the opening readings and responses on the, in the bulletin as we enter into Passion Week. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the Gospel according to Luke, the 19th chapter. After he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, Go into the village ahead of you, And as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God, joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, If these were silent, the stones would shout out. This is the gospel of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with him. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Our opening hymn, 344.
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We pray together the prayer of the day. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious way of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as though who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me. Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment the moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Join with me in reading Psalm 31 responsively. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. I have passed out of mind like the one who is dead. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around. But I trust in you, O Lord. My times are in your hand. Let your face shine upon your servant. Our second reading this morning is from the book of Philippians, the second chapter. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in the human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should be bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Please stand. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sunlight failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. 
And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women, women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Sisters and brothers, great grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This day is filled with great expectation. Like all of you expecting us to remember how to set up for communion. Because <laughs> it's been a while. We uh, will process as we have in the past. We'll be sharing the peace if you're comfortable with that. We'll even be passing the plates just like it used to be. And we'll try to remember how to do all that. Great expectations. There were great expectations on that Palm Sunday, that Sunday of the Passion, as Jesus rode into Jerusalem. There was excitement among some. There was anger and disappointment among others. There was fear and trembling. And yet there was an expectation of joy and triumph. Some of these feelings were fulfilled, and some were not. Palm Sunday is always a, a Sunday of extremes. We have that triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus with the crowds waving their palms. We're supposed to wave our palms today, I was told. Waving their palms and shouting and rejoicing in all the powerful things they had seen Jesus doing. Praising him, a risky business with Pilate and the Pharisees about. Risky business proclaiming him to be the king. Blessed is the one who comes as king, who comes in the name of the Lord. And then at the end, that gospel reading, Jesus slowly dying on the cross, breathing his last giving up his spirit. Extremes, expectations, wondering what's going to happen. The psalm kind of captures these extremes. I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. My life is spent with sorrow. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors. I am passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. They scheme together against me as they plot to take my life. That's a long way from blessed is he who comes as king, who comes in the name of the Lord. Catherine Schiffedecker Professor at Luther Seminary shares a story from about 10 years ago. She said that she took leave from Luther Seminary to take a sabbatical to Ethiopia to teach in the seminary there. She said she took her husband and her two little girls along to a land that was filled with great joy, and she says some challenges. One of these challenges was learning how to drive in a sprawling African city with a few very few working stoplights, sharing the road with pedestrians and livestock, livestock like donkeys, goats, and cattle, cattle, and lots of, shall we say, creative drivers. Hmm. Traffic jams were constant. It took us an hour and a half round trip to get our kids to their school. It was six miles away. The red Toyota SUV, circa 1990, that we drove around that city had a cassette player and we had brought some tapes so that we could listen to music while we sat in that constant traffic. Didn't keep the kids, the girls in the back seat from squabbling over whatever. We were listening to a tape one day and the Rolling Stones came on. Any Stones fans? Don't date yourself now. And the song came on you can't always get what you want. So I heard Sarah uh, 
Catherine shares, I heard from the back seat, Esther, age nine, telling Sarah, age four, see, Sarah, you can't always get what you want. Not perhaps what the Stones had in mind, talking about two kids squabbling in the back seat. And then she goes on to say, the crowds that were gathered in Jerusalem that day, some of them wanted some things to happen. And so many of them were disappointed. You can't always get what you want. First of all, the disciples and the crowds that were waving those palm branches, they had seen Jesus perform miracles and acts of power and glory teaching, and they hoped that he would be the long-expected Messiah, the one who would come and establish Israel on Mount Zion forever and kick out the Romans and all the nations, says the Old Testament, all the nations would come to Mount Zion and serve the King, the Christ. They had great expectations. They did not get what they wanted because by the end of the week, Jesus is dying on a cross. And as I mentioned, Pilate was there to keep the peace for the Romans, and King Herod was in town, and it was a dangerous thing to declare anyone to be king except Herod. And it was a dangerous thing to declare anybody to be the Son of God except Caesar. And so the crowds were risking much in declaring both of those things about Jesus. But Pilate and King Herod were there to keep the peace, the Pax Romana, the Roman peace, and they were going to do that no matter what. And so when any hint of rebellion arose, it was put down, and very often violently, very often including crucifixion. They thought they were keeping the peace, but they did not stop this new way, this new following of Jesus. And we had that little brief thing at the end of the gospel where the centurion, a Roman soldier, kind of a master sergeant in charge of a hundred soldiers, he was used to crucifixions, he was used to being the instrument of death to those who were convicted by the government. He looked at this man dying on the cross and made a confession. Certainly this man was innocent. The Pharisees and the religious leaders thought they got what they wanted. Jesus dead on a cross. They would stop this way in its tracks. They did not get what they wanted. And I think too Jesus entering into Jerusalem even knowing what was going to happen did not necessarily get what he wanted, what he came for, the kingdom of heaven. He came to declare God so loved the world, the Romans, the Jews, the Gentiles, the ruling class, the Pharisees, the scribes, the outsiders, sinners, priests. God so loved the world. That's what Jesus hoped for, that they would understand this message from God. And yet he came anyway, knowing what was going to happen. Let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptying himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that was, that is above every name. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. It's possible since I didn't see a lot of hands raised declaring themselves to be Stones fans. Do you know the sentence that comes next in that Rolling Stones song? You can't always get what you want, but if you try, sometimes you just might find you get what you need. 
You don't always get what you want, but you get what you need. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. They speak the truth, as it turns out, but not in a way that they imagine, says Catherine. This king does not come with earthly power to overthrow the empire. This king comes into Jerusalem not as a conquering hero, but as a servant. And the crowds who hailed him today will shout, crucify him by the end of the week. The crowds in Jerusalem so long ago dreamed of victory and glory. To paraphrase the Rolling Stones, they didn't get what they wanted, but they got what they needed. And so did we. My kingdom is not of this world, Jesus will tell Pilate this week. The powers that be, the old order of things that underlie our human condition, sin, death, the power of the devil, Jesus comes to conquer, to kick out of authority, to bring to light a new power. A king enters the holy city of Jerusalem, humble and riding on a donkey. He comes to destroy the old order of things and establish something new on an Easter sun rise. Do you not perceive it? And is this not what we hope for? Amen. Our hymn of the day, 264, Prepare the Royal Highway. confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world, signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share the peace of the Lord. receive the morning offering. just getting back to normal, but another piece by Mark. <laughs> Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feet where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. All is prepared. All are welcome. Come and receive the presence of Christ for you.
please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you and strengthen you and keep you in his covenant promise of life, now and forever. Amen. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you always with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending him 811. Go in peace to serve the Lord.